Drive for show, putt for dough. Let's talk golf. What is up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of 10 Invest. The time is now investing, where I'm your host, Jimmy Bishrap. Today, we're talking about a stock that I'm excited about because it's one that me and a few other group members won the San Diego State University Stock Pitch Competition, which is a pretty cool thing to say. This stock was one that I got super excited about the minute they made a very big acquisition last year, and I promise you we'll talk all about that in this video. So, I mean, without further ado, let's talk Callaway. Why Callaway? Well, the thesis behind this is based on a few major factors. First off, in my opinion, the biggest one, popularity in golf has taken a shot towards the moon. And more specifically, the popularity in golf among the millennial generation. According to the National Golf Foundation, 36.9 million people participated in golf on and off course in 2020. Off course refers to something like a driving range or a top golf. Now the interesting thing is of those 36.9 million golfers, 30% of them are from the young age demographic, meaning ages 18 to 34. In addition to those numbers, golf rounds played year over year have increased 41% in quarter four of 2020. Now, most people give credit to the coronavirus for setting the spark to the recent rise in golf's popularity. And though that may be the case, I still have reason to believe that this so-called fab is here to stay. People are golfing more, simple as that. And a lot of the people who are golfing are new to the sport. And I believe that Callaway is setting themselves up perfectly to take full advantage of this new wave of golfers. The Callaway name is one that's gained a sort of credibility over the last 40 years. They've signed prominent golfers such as Arnold Palmer or 2021 champions Phil Mickelson and John Rahm. This is what's led them to become the number one driver and putter on tour. I always try to make the effort to invest in something that I know. Now, myself, growing up around the sport with my phenom of a cousin, Ryan Bishrat, practicing nonstop, participating in tournaments all the time, I can definitely say that I'm pretty knowledgeable on this sector. And in high school, I was a team captain of the CIF winning golf team. So, like I said, I'm pretty knowledgeable on this sector. And I know that golf has always been perceived as that old man sport. But now this viewpoint and opinion is starting to shift. I mean, rather than talk down on the sport, younger people have chosen to embrace it and try to make it more fun in a way. I mean, for instance, the millennial powerhouse Barstool Sports has even done a cross branding with one of Callaway's company, Travis Matthews. For instance, this hat here. I mean, I don't even know why I'm not wearing it right now. I'm wearing the Padre one, but this is a it's a Callaway hat too. When they when they did the links down at Petco Park, pretty cool experience. But I guess I'll, I'll wear this hat instead. Quick little change. All right, and back to work. On top of Travis Matthews, Callaway is also the parent company to Jack Wolfskin, an extremely popular international outdoors clothing brand. On top of clothing. Callaway is also the parent company to Ogeo, a very prominent bag brand, thus allowing them to offer you everything from t-shirts down to the golf bag. But rest assured, these acquisitions are not taking away from Callaway's hard goods sales, meaning golf balls and golf clubs. Those actually reached a record high in net sales in 2020. The company saw a 48.5% increase in golf club sales and a 14.3% increase in golf ball sales. And by the way, they aren't only big in the US. Callaway is the number one hard goods brand in Japan and Europe. The point I'm trying to make is golf is proliferating. And with an additional 17 million people in latent demand, this trend doesn't look like it's going to be slowing down anytime soon. Okay, now normally I'd have a part where I dive into the financials, but since I'm kind of sprinkling in some numbers all throughout this video, I decided to wipe that part from this video and call this next part the big acquisition. See, 
Callaway didn't stop their acquisitions at Soft Goods. In the fall of 2020, Callaway announced that they will be acquiring Top Golf Entertainment Group based upon a $2 billion implied equity value of Top Golf. Top Golf is the leading tech-enabled golf entertainment business. The company revolutionized the sport by combining golf with fun. Top Golf is a place where people can go for drinks, food, and a fun atmosphere. And most importantly, golf. But no, not the golf that you're used to seeing with playing 18 holes on a golf course. Rather, they combined an arcade and a driving range with the atmosphere of a nightclub to give you top golf. The place is set up with sections of couches. Each section has its own server. There's music playing, TVs everywhere, fun lights, and much more to add to the experience. Top Golf provides fun games where people can play different modes of accuracy, distance, and so on. This is all possible because of Top Golf's Top Tracer technology, which guess what? Callaway now owns. Currently, Callaway's looked at as a COVID stock, one that's benefited from the pandemic and the lockdown. But I believe with this acquisition of Topgolf, they now doubled themselves as a recovery play as well. I mean, think about it. People have been cooped up in their homes dying to do something, and now that more people are vaccinated and more people are out and about, I believe Topgolf acts as the perfect first night out. Over the years, Topgolf has gained tons of popularity, and this is why they've seen a 30% compound annual growth rate since 2017. Topgolf will also act as a way for Callaway to gain more exposure to new golfers. Now, I bet you're wondering how the heck an entertainment company can help a golf company gain exposure, and well, I guess I can give you a cool little explanation of why I think so. Again, this is my opinion, and my opinion doesn't matter and you should always know that you are investing at your own risk because I am not a financial advisor. Anyways, for explaining purposes, let's use Matt. Matt is not much of a golfer, but his buddies convince him to go out for some drinks and fun at a local Topgolf. So he goes. And while he's there playing the different games, Matt realizes how fun golf can actually be. He comes to this realization while he's at a Top Golf using Callaway golf balls, Callaway golf clubs, and he's seeing Callaway logos all around the facility. That alone can make all the difference in the world because now when Matt decides that he actually wants to take up the sport as a new hobby, he'll remember this experience when shopping at his local golf store for his own set of golf clubs. Thus giving Callaway the advantage over their competition. And well, since I'm mentioning their competition, I guess that's the perfect segue into part three of this video. Who is the competition? Callaway's competitors includes names such as Auschnitt Holdings, which is Titleist, or there's Dick's Sporting Goods, there's Nike, there's Ping, there's Strixner, there's all these brands. But Callaway is kind of, I think the best way to go about this is Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So Callaway is like the porridge that's just right meaning they're not super overpriced, expensive, prestigious, kind of like scaring away new golfers such as like a Titleist brand, but they're also not like a Srixen or a Ping or a lower end brand like that. They're literally the perfect medium, about 10, 20% cheaper than a Titleist product, yet they still have prominent golfers using their clubs, such as like I mentioned earlier, Phil Mickelson and John Rahm, who just won majors in 2021. Overall, I see this being a major advantage for Callaway. Now, apart from the competition I just mentioned, now that they've acquired Topgolf, they have to deal with competitors in the entertainment sector, such as the Topgolf copycats that have been opening up all around. I mean, in San Diego, there's a golf bar that's opened up where you play virtual golf, you can eat, drink, same exact concept, but it's not exactly the same. See, Topgolf holds the Top Tracer technology, so that alone gives Topgolf the upper hand over anyone in the sector. Okay, now we finally made it to the last part of the video. The pros and cons. For this section, I wanna get into some risks that pertain to Callaway. Since we're on the topic of Topgolf, I guess I'll begin with some fears that I have more specifically with them. Now, Callaway has always been in the hard goods, golf club, golf ball product equipment sales. So going into a completely different sector, such as entertainment, is definitely not gonna be as easy as it sounds. Like every merger, this runs the risk of failing simply due to a culture shock within the integration. 
The good news for Callaway, though, is they've been an early investor in Top Golf, and I'm hoping that this works to their advantage. The next risk or negative worth mentioning for Callaway is they're facing the same issue that a lot of other companies are dealing with, and that's the increase in freight and shipping charges. The company has seen their margins go down a good amount, and at a time where popularity is at a near high, I'm sure Callaway couldn't have thought of a worse time for this to happen. But then again, looking at this from a glass half filled perspective, as COVID goes away and all the logistics come back to normal, we can only expect the increase in cost to dissipate and Callaway's margins increase yet again. Okay, now I want to mention one more kind of interesting pro, so to say. Now, I've been talking about this whole video. Popularity in the sport within the millennial generation is going up like crazy. But the same could be said for the older generations as well. Baby boomers are set to retire from now until 2031. Meaning this whole new wave of retirees are now looking for a new hobby to pick up. And I believe that COVID helped them see how great of a hobby golf could really be. Well guys, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to show your support by liking and subscribing to the channel. And if you have any suggestions for me or my content, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget that if we can get this video up to 100 likes, I will be posting a breakdown video on my biggest holding in my account. So if you're curious to see what that stock is, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my page for when I post that. Well guys, that's it for today. Always remember, the time is now.